What's up, Lost Art Gamers? Welcome back to another Lost Art video. Uh, you know, you know how we do here? I randomly decided to rip it and ship it finally. Bought a relic, or yeah, Mastercraft kit, relic tool kit. And I'm gonna be crafting a relic tool. Now, Brother Chris, you might be asking, why in God's name are you making a relic tool? Well, I figured it's time to see just how much better is a relic tool. And I'm gonna be making a relic shovel. I'm going to be comparing a relic shovel to a purple shovel, and we're just going to kind of see sort of, um, you know, the difference between the two. How much better is it really, and how long would it take to make back your investment, both in terms of a uh, sort of life energy perspective, time investment, and just waiting for the energy to come back, stuff like that. Uh, but... I'm going to get this shovel crafted and I will be back with you all shortly. I think I'm going to start with doing 10 mini games with purple and then 10 mini games with relic. And if I don't feel like that's enough, I will do more. But that's what I'm thinking right now. All right. Now it's the moment of truth. The master excavating tool. We're going to get five of the following things. We're really hoping for basically any reward plus and mini game plus. Really, we want both the minigame things and any additional drop chance reward bullshittery we are thumbs upping for. Here we go. It's shoveling time, baby. What are we getting? Ooh, let's see. So we got a minigame, minigame. Nice, we got double minigame and basic reward. Okay. We'll take that. Now it's time to do some digging. Pikachu mining. Alright, so for the excavationing, the excavating, the digging, the diggling. These are the shovels that I used for building up my stacks. I just used a random bullshit green shovel that just has super armor on it. Uh, I mean, you could have like a purple shovel you crafted for this. I just... I didn't because I've been busy. I'm busy, okay? I'm crafting fusion mats. But for the minigame... The f six fucking digs before the minigame. Or the five digs before the minigame. This shovel is what I used. Then for the purple minigame section, I used this shovel. It has super armor, minigame reward, and minigame difficulty decrease. Uh, this is probably about as good as you can ask for. I guess you could get rid of super armor for, like, another reward line, like basic reward, rare reward, something like that. But that's not what I have. This is what I have. And then my relic shovel for all the relic um, minigames I did. My relic shovel rolled super armor, minigame reward acquisition, minigame difficulty decrease, excavating trade skill basic reward, and gathering speed. Ideally, the gathering speed would be another um, basic reward line or reward bonus line, but you can't pick and choose. Aside from that, I think my Relic Shovel is pretty good. I have no complaints with it. Could have been a lot worse. Glad with what I got. Into the data now, let us go. So we have kind of the breakdown of what I did. I know I went over this briefly already in the video, but I'm gonna go over it a little bit more thoroughly here. So I used a green shovel to build up the five stacks, and then I swapped the shovel on the sixth dig, which is the mini game. Uh, for the purple one, I did the epic shovel. You, you saw the stats of the shovel, and then for the relic one, you also saw the stats for that shovel. I only calculated the mini game results because it would make sense to do the in-between results. Also, they're kind of irrelevant, but I'm just being as transparent as possible. I did 10 mini games for each shovel between the purple and orange one, or the epic and relic one. And I only played the minigames on green Relic Trace nodes. I didn't go purple node hunting. Um, the reason being, I don't think that's realistic. Also, I wanted it to be like a controlled thing. I didn't want it to be like, oh, I got three purples in one and then zero on the other. So that one gives me more because purples give more. You know the drill. And I also decided not to use the sniffer dog because I think... Well, I, I actually have no idea. I was going to say I think it's bad, but I honestly don't know why I didn't use it. I just didn't use it. So maybe somebody smarter out there than me knows if it's better or not. Either way, this is what I did. And let's go over to the results for the epic shovel. 
Okay, so for the purple shovel results or the epic shovel results, this is kind of what I got. I got 867 ancient relics, I got 417 rare relics, and I got 122 oreja relics. You can see I color coded them, so the white materials, the green materials, and blue materials, and then their gold values. I got 2,601 gold from the ancient relics, 291 gold from the rare relics, and then 500 gold flat for the oreja where eh, for reha relics. I'm not going to re-record that. Enjoy. Why is that? Um, these prices were calculated at the time of whenever they were this value. Obviously, don't really look at the gold values. I just put them there, put them there because I kind of need a value to play against at the time. Take the raw number of things that I get and apply your own server's prices or your whatever. Just even if you're on NA West, the prices have changed, I'm sure. So apply the current prices on your server slash region and you can extrapolate the data from the raw data I've collected. Just be smart. Anyways, the relic data we have... As promised, the relic results look similar, but you'll notice uh, the blue relics are way more. So I got 992 ancient relics, 493 rare relics, and then 346 oreja relics. The ancient relics were worth 2,976 gold this time around. The rare relics were worth 345 gold, and the orejas were worth 1,418 gold. 1,418 gold. Um, I did get a significant amount more oreja relics and i'll show you the raw data afterwards but it seemed like i was getting oreja relics pretty much every excavate i don't know if that was just like crazy rng or whatever but again 10 mini games each is a full life energy bar so i obviously it's not enough to make a concrete statement but i think it's enough to get a general idea now we get to the fun data the comparison I am not going to read out everything because I trust you'll be able to do it slash you remember what I just read out to you, but you can see on the left there is the epic shovel, on the right there is the relic shovel. Uh, between the two, the total gold is going to be 3,392 for the epic shovel, where it's 4,739 gold for the relic shovel, and that is going to be a 29.42 difference, 29.42% difference, uh, ends up being about 1,300 gold. I'll show an exact amount in a bit but uh it's about 30 percent more which is kind of what i expected ish to see around that ballpark um how long will that take to pay off well do i have the next slide for you my friend so this is one of the second to last slides i have so don't worry it's almost done then we just have the raw data sheet after the last slide but this one's going to be focused on life energy and its nuances so we're just going to go over this very briefly so in case you're unaware, I'll give you the sort of information here. It takes 180 energy per dig or minigame. Every dig is one action. You need five actions to get five stacks. And then on the sixth one, it's the minigame. So it's five digs for a minigame. Six if you include the minigame with it because it's five digs. And then on the sixth one, you get the minigame. So if you're counting all of those, it's six. Makes sense? And we're going to assume... For the sake of ease, it takes two days to fully restore an energy bar of 11,000 or 10,800 in this case, because that's what we're working with. And it takes 1,080 energy to get to a mini game and play it, i.e. six digs. So six digs is 1,080 energy or 10,800 energy for 10 mini games. Whew, that's a lot of words, word salad. Uh, and it's going to take you 42 days of energy regen or 226,000 energy total to recoup the cost using the data I have here in the middle, which is this. It is going to be 10 sets of 10 minigames using my 29% more value uh, than the purple shovel to recoup the initial costs of your relic shovel. Uh, my relic shovel I purchased at 28,500 gold. Obviously, this is going to be a completely different number for you, depending on the price of your relic kit. Again, this is stuff you have to figure out on your own. I'm just providing you the information that I managed to get after my testing. Um, just to drive the point home again, if you're waiting for natural regen, it's going to be 42 days of energy regen. And that's if you spend it on cooldown, you never let it overcap. 
i.e. 226,000 energy total. My god, I'm not cut up to do this in early in the morning. So this last slide is just sort of a verdict that I typed up. Um, I'll let you read that if you want to read it on your own, but I'm just going to paraphrase. Is the Relic Toolkit worth it? I think if you're doing it for excavation and minigame swapping, and you're somebody that enjoys life skilling, or the price makes even more sense for you than it does when I calculated this for me personally, I think you can make a definite argument for the shovel. Um, two things to keep in mind, though. The payoff is going to take a while. It's not like a forever a while, but it is quite a significant amount of time. And the second big one is the fact that you can't pick what your relic shovel rolls. So if you are a very unlucky person, and they do exist, I usually am pretty unlucky, you can just not roll minigame rule. And if you roll a shovel, a relic shovel without minigame reward, that's kind of like a complete waste of gold, right? Like I said, I think you can make an argument for and against it, but I think the argument for it is probably a bit better than the argument against it. Again, it's ultimately up to you. Um, either way, I think it's fine. It just depends on you and what your goals are slash what you want to spend your time doing. I flash banged you, hopefully it didn't scare you too badly, but this is the last sort of thing, you know, if you've watched these type of videos from me before, I always like showing the raw data. It's never usually anything too pretty, but it just kind of shows you how I tracked everything and sort of my findings on it. I have the breakdown of the minigame numbers and exactly the totals I got from all of them. There was only one Relic Shovel minigame where I didn't get any blue materials, um, which is interesting. And you can see on the regular uh, purple or epic shovel, there was quite a few where I didn't get any. Again, I don't know if this was just a crazy discrepancy between the two, or I just got super unlucky or unlucky wherever you want to point the finger. Again, <clears throat> I don't have infinite resources, so I can't super test these things like as many trials as you would need. Again, I urge you all to do your own testing. Um, my stuff is just to try to get you to think about doing things, or if you're too lazy like I typically am, you do these things yourself. You know, I try not to be biased as much as I can. Again, only use green relic trace nodes for all the mini games, and you can kind of see here how I calculated the gold costs and the prices that I used at the time. So, for example, ancient relics were three gold each. Uh, rare relics were 0.7 gold each, and then orejas were 4.1 gold each. That's how I came up with these values. Then I used a calculator on the internet to figure out the percentage differences because I'm bad at math and I have no ability. And then I did the whole, like, scratch energy thing here. I'd have to do 21 sets of 10 to earn earning that additional 13, uh, 1,347 gold to cover the cost of the relic tool. 42 days for natural energy regen, or 226,000 life in total. Ultimately, this was an enjoyable thing to do. It's something that I've wanted to do. I want to get all relic life skill tools eventually anyways, and I figured this was a good excuse to do it. Uh, shout out to Max Red on the Discord for just kind of ripping it as an idea, and me reading that and being like, yeah, fuck it, now is the time. Uh, I guess that's a plug for the Discord. Discord down below in the description. Join it, hang out. Um, just be cool, really, is the only rule. Don't be a, a biatch. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and of course, consider becoming a YouTube member. It's like a Patreon or Twitch sub. It helps support the channel and the things I do and lets me continue to produce such high quality bangers such as this. Jokes aside, thank you all for watching and your continued support. Like the video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, leave a comment down below letting me know how wrong or right I am. As always, Brother Chris out. Bye!